All right, folks, how about something Greek today? What? No, you don't need to lube up for that. It's a sword, the Hellenic Copus. This one here is made by Chris Cutlery, and it's a cavalry copus. They usually had a blade length between 60 and 68 centimeters. The infantry copus tended to be heavier and could be shorter. It's between 48 and 68 centimeters. These had blades made of iron, and the hilt could be made of wood, bone, or iron. The original that this reproduction is based on is in the museum in Corfu, Greece, and the iron handle scales that it has are actually hollow, which is quite interesting. Saves some weight. The blade on this reproduction is made of 5160 spring steel, which is always an excellent choice. Very high quality steel. Oh, the sun! It's too much! I'm not Greek, I can't handle it. The grip is ebony and the steel guard is blued. The blade has a pronounced rib. Pretty interesting, so that gives it more stiffness. It seems very close to the original in terms of blade profile and cross-section overall shape. From what I've read, the original Corfu Copus weighs 678 grams, or one and a half pounds. Uh, it's likely that it has lost a bit of mass due to corrosion over time. And uh, Manning Imperial in Australia has made a reproduction of it as well. That one costs over $2,000, very high end. And that one also has hollow iron handle plates. Uh, it's 25 grams more than the original. And uh, at Manning Imperial, they think that's about right, accounting for the material loss. This reproduction is a bit heavier. This one weighs 808 grams or 1.78 pounds. Now, of course, there's a huge price difference between the one made by Manning Imperial, over $2,000, and this one here by Chris Cutlery, which is $325. So, of course, it's not going to be that detailed. If you compare them side by side, you can see some differences. Uh, for example, the original has a bit more detail on the hilt. The bird's eye seems to be concave, whereas this one here it has a, a pin driven through. I'm assuming that's also what secures it. I'm guessing that the tang goes here and that's what holds it in place. There's a little bit more intricate detail on the original one. However, I would say that this is pretty close, especially if you think, think about the fact that this is still in the budget range. You know, 325 is not a whole lot on the sort of reproduction market. It is in, I would say it's in the upper end of the budget range. So of course you can't expect the same level of detail as you would with a $2,000 reproduction. It's just not gonna happen. And I think considering that, this is really quite good. Uh, the scabbard is very simple. Uh, essentially, this is, this is just a, <laughs> a wooden box. You know, to store the sword. It is not tightly fitted, you know, just falls out. There are no metal parts on it or leather covering or anything. Uh, the corners were also left as they are on the board. So definitely nothing to write home about, but you know, for transportation and storage, it's still good to have. So it is where it is. All right, so handling. This is actually the first really accurate reproduction of a copus that I have. I've had other swords that were called Copus, but were really just kind of vaguely inspired by that particular Greek sword. This one here actually um, is based on a particular original find. And so I, I don't have a whole lot of comparison because the other ones I've had were shorter generally and, and heavier. So this feels really good to me. It's It's a very agile sword, uh, despite it being heavier than the original, I still think this is perfectly fine. It's still under a kilo, and you can throw some pretty mean quick cuts with it. The nice thing about the grip, of course, is that the bird's head locks your hand in, so this, this is really hard to drop. You have to, you have to basically try to drop this. So that's nice, and the way it's shaped is great. I really like that. Uh, seems very close to the original too. It's a nice palm swell here, very comfortable. Works really well, it's nicely rounded, gives you a good feel for the edge, and uh, yeah, it just it works. Really the only complaint I have 
is that they didn't uh, didn't grind the guard right here. So this this guard here is square. So the, the rounded handle runs into the square guard here and stops there. And now you have kind of a, a sharp angle there on that corner. So that's a bit uncomfortable if you rub over it. I mean, you can avoid it. You can just hold it further down. It would be nice if this was all, if this was also rounded as well to just kind of follow the shape of the grip. So again, something that you kind of have to expect in this price range. But as far as cutting performance is concerned. This, this actually surprised me. Uh, on the very first attempt, it didn't go terribly well. I mean, it, it was all right, it wasn't really a problem, but it wasn't the cleanest cuts on the tatami. I did better later on. So I did a number of tests to figure out how it does. And uh, again, handling is excellent during all that. You can control it quite well. Um, not as forgiving as some other swords that I've had, but of course, I've, the techniques I use are also mainly based on other swords. Right, before I forget, another thing to point out, uh, one of the reproductions of the Corfu Copus apparently is sharpened on the back as well. So it's double-edged, at least for a part of the blade. I don't know if it's the entire blade. So I couldn't verify if the original is also sharpened on both sides. Uh, that would be great. I would definitely love that. Um, this wouldn't be super difficult to do. Um, like you would definitely have to grind this a bit, but it's not a particularly thick spine on this. So you could do that if you wanted to. So the other tatami cutting session I've had with this was a lot better. Got, had some really nice clean cuts with it. And uh, it's really quite impressive. It's a good grind, very gradual grind from the center of the blade toward the edge, no pronounced secondary bevel or anything. So really great job on the finish in general. The, um, the grind and the finish just turned out very well. And because of that, there is little resistance that this blade here encounters. So it doesn't have to be shaving sharp, it will cut well. So again, a case for blade geometry over edge. In a perfect world, you have both. Ideally, you have a good cross section and a nice sharp edge, but uh, the way it is, really good. And in fact, this is really all I would expect for a weapon like this, because this would go up against shields, helmets, armor, etc. I also did some tests on a ballistic gel dummy, and yeah, this thing's devastating for sure. It cuts in deeply. Of course, in a real human body, there would be more bones in the way, but just the soft tissue damage, pretty good. Definitely does well. The forward curvature certainly helps with that. It makes it penetrate more deeply and uh, you can do a number of different cuts with it. It works. It works very, it cut very through well. through the pipe and then was stopped by the wooden dowel inside. So then I went on to the harder tests, chopping wood, didn't notice any problem, cuts quite well. Again, definitely a powerful blade. And then keeping shields in mind, I also tried it on a particle board, which is quite thick, a lot thicker than the shields would have been, but it is only particle board, so not that big of a deal. So I, I hacked into the, it a couple of times. And then meanwhile, I started to feel something in the hill, like something shifts and it's not much at all. In fact, it's, it's kind of even hard to replicate. Like I noticed if I swing it sideways, you might even be able to hear it. There's a bit of a creaking, clicking sound. Um, it doesn't feel loose really. It is just, there's, yeah, here. You can feel something shift slightly but the, when, when I try to move the guard, this is absolutely solid. Also, to point out here, I'm really impressed by the fit. This is like, there's absolutely no gap here. That is really well done. That's probably why this guard isn't going anywhere. Also, speaking of the guard, the bluing has started to rub off a little bit. It doesn't seem the most durable. So, I'm not entirely sure about the construction. I'm not seeing any pins or rivets or anything here. All there is is this piece. So I'm assuming that the tang 
actually goes through up to at least here and that this is where where it's pinned so when i felt this i got suspicious and i wanted to make sure there's nothing serious like you know the tang snapping inside the grip or anything like that so i kept hacking away at that particle board and struck it pretty hard too a number of times and it was fine it, it hasn't gotten any worse so i'm not really concerned about it this has proven a solid construction i don't think you'll have any problem with that especially not with standard tatami or water bottle cutting and yeah it has it has proven itself that's what i would say so definitely pretty damn good overall so again there are of course drawbacks so the weight is a bit higher than the original but it doesn't bother me because it's still it feels appropriate for a sword like this and it means you have a bit more cutting power potentially so and it's it's still again under a kilo so perfectly maneuverable it's not as detailed as the original and the scabbard as said is very plain but that's really about it otherwise oh yeah one thing i've noticed is i did some thrusts as well and i bend the tip a little bit on that not much and it was very easy to bend it back plus as said the originals were iron so i can't really fault the sword for that so yeah i like it this is really one of the few in fact so far it's the only copus that is actually based on an original and has has this level of historical accuracy in this price range anything under 500 dollars what i've seen so far has not been very close to the historical originals this one is pretty good on that and yeah handles well cuts well worth checking out i got it on cult of athena which doesn't seem to have it anymore unfortunately at this time but i'll just link to chris cutlery's website and uh yeah that's about it hope you found the review helpful thanks for watching and have a good one folks